let us again resume solution to engineering mechanics by uh, Timo Sinko D. H. Young, both from Stanford, Director J. B. Rao and uh, Professor Sukumar Pati. Now I am going to I am going forward to discuss uh, uh, this problem. Now problem set 2.2 and solution to 2.19. Uh, determine the magnitude and direction of the resultant of the four forces shown in figure A. As per your book, this is your figure A. Uh, there are four different forces. Uh, this is 445 Newton. This is also 445 Newton. This one is 1335 Newton and this one is 890 Newton. This is your X axis and this is your Y axis. Now, before I proceed, I might, uh, I should explain you that the forces are not drawn to scale. Means, if from this point to this point indicates 445 Newton, then definitely from this point to this point is not 445 Newton because uh, the length of the arrow indicates the magnitude. Uh, uh, if you consider this length representing 445 Newton, then this 445 Newton should have been of the same length, of this length. That is, it should have reached to this point. But anyway, we are not concerned about that. And if again, if this length from here to here represents 445 Newton, then from here to here is not definitely 890 Newton because the length is small. So, so to represent 890 Newton, the length of this arrow should be longer than the length of this arrow. But that does not affect. Now, <coughs> Before I proceed, let me explain these things. Uh, suppose there is a force F like this. This is your x-axis, this is your y-axis. If this angle is theta, in this triangle, if you take cos theta and cross multiply, you get this side as F cos theta. That is the horizontal component of F along x-axis. And in the same triangle, this triangle, if you take sine theta means perpendicular over hypotenuse and you cross multiply, you get this side as this side as f sine theta and the length of this side is same thing as the length of this side. So this is your f sine theta. The x component, the y component. Now the question is, if this force f is not making angle theta, this force is horizontal like this. Means if this force F is horizontal along X axis, then theta is zero. If F is horizontal, that is theta is zero. So put then your F cos theta becomes F because cos zero is one, one into F is F. And your F sine theta becomes, for theta is zero, sine zero is zero. That is F sine theta is zero. Means if a force is horizontal, totally horizontal along X axis, its vertical component is zero. Similarly, if this force, this force is vertical, instead of like this, if it is like this, then your theta is equal to, then your theta is equal to 90 degree. Then your theta is equal to 90 degree. So that is what I am explaining. If F is vertical, that is theta is equal to 90 degree, then your horizontal component, F cos theta, would cos 90 is zero, F into zero is zero sine 90 is 1, f into 1 is f. Means if a force is totally vertical, means along y axis, its x component is 0. If a force is along x axis, its y component is 0. So, here, this one, this 4, 4, 5 Newton is along x axis. So, this does not have a y component. Similarly, this 8, 9, 0 Newton is along y axis. So, this does not have a uh, X component. That is what I have explained here. Therefore, 445 Newton along negative X axis. That is this one, not this one. This one does not have a have a vertical component. 
and your 890 this one and 890 along negative axis also uh, do not have a horizontal component means no component of it along x axis so only these two forces this this 445 newton and this 1335 newton since they are inclined at some angle to x axis therefore they will have both horizontal and vertical components so let us assume this angle is alpha and this angle is beta alpha angle made by this force with x axis beta angle made by this force along uh, x axis so so let us go to the next page then is very simple uh, so that is what i am explaining the other 445 newton means this one and 1335 newton both have horizontal and vertical components because both of them make some angle with the x axis now let us find out alpha and beta if you look at the diagram uh, this force if you look at this point then this is a triangle this is 90 degree this is one unit and from here to here is two units one unit two unit so tan alpha will be 1 over 2 so your tan alpha is 1 over 2 so alpha is tan inverse 1 over 2 if you put it in a scientific calculator this many degrees if you convert it into degree minute and seconds this uh, this much that is nearly equal to 20 nearly equal to 26 degree 33 minutes of arc so alpha is uh, known now let us find out beta now this is the angle beta from the tip of this suppose this tip is here if you drop a perpendicular to this side is 3 units 1 2 3 if you drop a perpendicular here to this side also 3 units 1 2 3 or if you consider here 1 unit and 1 unit so tan beta is equal to 1 over 1 you can take 3 over 3 that is same thing as 1 you can take 1 over 1 that is also 1 so your tan beta is equal to 1 over 1 that is 1 so beta is equal to tan inverse 1 that is equal to 45 degrees so alpha and beta both are found out now rest is very simple now now the x component now the x component of 445 newton this 445 newton that is this component will be 445 of cos alpha 445 cos alpha put it in a scientific calculator this comes out to be this many newton and the y component of this that is this one that is same thing as this will be a 445 sin alpha that is equal to 198.905 newton Now let us find out the x and y component of the force one three three five newton. Now this one in front of the angle beta will be one three three five sine beta, and this one will be one three three five cos beta. So, so that is what I have done here. so the x component of 1335 newton is this many cos beta that comes out to be this many newtons and the y component of this is this many sin beta that comes out to be this many newtons now the uh, now now we have resolved we have resolved both these forces this force as well as this force to x and y components and this force is along x negative x axis this does not have a y component this is all totally along y axis this does not have x component now let us find out a uh, sigma x means sum of the forces along x axis now the x component of this is along positive x axis the x component of this is also along positive x axis and this is along negative x axis so the x component of this and the x component of this force will be added and this will be subtracted because it is opposing the combined effect of the x component of this and the x component of this so so your sigma x is equal to this plus this minus 445 that comes out to be 
897.059 newton now let us then sigma y this is along negative y axis and the y component if is along positive y axis <coughs> and the y component of this force is along negative y axis <coughs> so there are two forces 890 newton and the y component of this along negative x axis <coughs> sorry negative y axis <coughs> and the y component of this is along positive y axis so sigma y is equal to this minus this minus this thus comes out to be this means the net sum of all the forces along y axis is along negative along negative y axis now and this one and this one both are perpendicular <coughs> and we know when two vectors are perpendicular the resultant will be square of this plus square of this and square root of that in this case this one that is sigma x is along positive x axis sigma x sigma y being negative means to this side so the resultant will be so the resultant will be this one square of this square of this and square root of that so your r is equal to uh, <coughs> square of this <coughs> plus square of sigma y <coughs> sorry <coughs> i have used it in a scientific calculator instead of putting the individual of this and this and finding out the squares I have straight away put in a scientific calculator and this comes out to be nearly 1865 Newton. <coughs> but if you look at your book, the answer is given as 1860 Newton. Nothing to worry about that because I have taken decimal digits uh, up to three decimal figures. Therefore, the answer is slightly more than this. Uh, now, <coughs> now let this angle is theta, that is what is given in the book. This angle is theta, the resultant making with x-axis. So, tan theta will be perpendicular over base. So, your tan theta will be sigma y over sigma x. Now, put the value of sigma, sigma x, put the value of sigma y. Yeah. So, that comes out to be 61.249 degree that is nearly 61 degree 14 minute 57.84 seconds of arc right so the resultant is making this much angle